And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to The Power Is Now TV. You can find us on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, any smart TV device. Please download our TV app at Power Is Now TV, where you can watch all of our programming. You can also listen to podcasts anywhere you find your podcast of our shows. Our goal is to provide information, tools, and resources on homeownership and today in business. This is the first of many shows we'll be interviewing executives, people who are making it happen in business, from technology to restaurants to so, to, to service-related business types. You name it, we're going to talk about it right here on The Power Is Now. With me today is Michael Moore. He's the CEO of Black Achievers, Inc., and I'm having a great conversation with him about his background and really what just led him to this point of being today the CEO of Black Achievers, Inc. And again, Michael, thank you so much for your time today and uh, just sharing with us your story and leading us now to Black Achievers, Inc. Well, thank you for having me, Eric. It's been a great conversation so far. I look forward to continuing it. So, Michael, as CEO of Black Achievers, Inc., tell me what is your role? How do you define your role? And perhaps what, uh, what do you spend most of your time doing? So I'm really charged with, obviously, fundraising for the organization, making sure that we have corporate sponsors. We have six of the top Fortune 500 companies that sponsor our organization. We want to continue that. We want to grow that nationally. Also, the strategy and direction and how we execute our plan to open chapters in different cities. Uh, we have now spent five years in Cincinnati kind of perfecting our uh, organization and how it runs. But this year, we've expanded to 12 other cities. And just how we do that, how we find leadership, how we establish relationships with leaderships and set up boards and things of that nature uh, locally in order to capture uh, the corporations that are in those cities. So those are the things that I'm working on now and just that expansion of, uh, of, our, of our mission. So our mission is to you know, connect, uh, educate and economically empower the African-American community. And we really want that to be our ethos that pushes us forward and makes sure that uh, people all over the country um, have the same um, direction in mind as we do here in, at headquarters. Now, Michael, are you the founder of the organization uh, and, uh, and, and finding or and being the founder of the organization uh, that you start off literally with no members? Yeah, so I'm the founder of the organization. Now, the original Black Achievers started in, I believe, like 1968 uh, through the YMCA. So a lot of people will remember that they had a YMCA program called Black Achievers, which I came up through for young kids, right? That kind of got discontinued uh, around 2014 and 2015. So when I saw that that was an opportunity for that name in particular, uh, we were actually able to trademark that and stand that up as a separate 501c3. So that in and of itself is a, is a unique story and an amazing opportunity that God gave me to step into a brand that was already established for like 30 years. And we work with the NAACP to do that. But I am the founder of this version of Black Achievers for adults um, that started the organization in 2018. So it's it's been a phenomenal ride so far. Wow. It that would be an understatement. I mean, to go from being the founder, and I would love to hear the story on the YMCA. I remember that organization. I, I think I was involved maybe for a brief period of time in the YMCA, the Black Achievers Inc. And so you were able to obtain that name, trademark it, start this organization from zero, and you are at 100,000 members today. You know, I'm a member of many organizations, nonprofit organizations. And I don't, I think this has to be uh, the first uh, that I've ever heard of uh, meeting the founder of an organization and building it to this level, and particularly an African-American organization. And so you must be very proud. I know your parents have to be proud on what you've been able to achieve because this is your full-time gig. This is not a side hustle anymore, right? <laughs> That is correct. Yeah. So we've raised about um, somewhere around $1.5 million since uh, 2020. A lot of that is due to obviously the horrific um, situation with George Floyd. 
But when that out of coming out of that was a lot of companies and corporations started to allocate dollars towards black led black founded nonprofits that were trying to help um, black professionals and people in corporate uh, roles and also business owners. So we've been able to uh, ride that and be able to, uh, to capitalize on that so that we can, um, you know, basically go full time. So like I said, now we have a staff of five people. We have a revenue model of helping diversify pipelines of other nonprofit boards. So we provide training for our members to do that. And then also um, all of the education pieces that we have. So foundation support us in that work as well. And that's a revenue stream that allows us to do this full time. So it's very, very exciting to follow your passion and be able to do it, um, you know, as a full time effort. So let's talk about the services you offer as a member of your organization. And perhaps we should start with, you know, what does it take to be a member? Uh, is there an application process? Is there a fee? Is it open to other races? Is it just for African Americans? Can anybody be a member of Black Achievers Inc.? Yeah, so anyone can be a member, and about 95% of our members are African American, but about 5% are for what we call allies or people from different races that support um, helping to uplift the uh, Black community. So we really have a very strong allyship program, and we invite anyone from any ethnic group to support us if they care about the causes of our organization. And as far as membership, it's um, it's very affordable. Our membership is twenty nine dollars for college students, um, uh, through seventy nine dollars for uh, seasoned professionals, and that's it per year. It's just a one time fee. And then for business owners, it's like one hundred and forty nine dollars, but that allows them to uh, you know have a platform that allows them to to sh showcase their products and services. So um, that's newsletter inclusion and being part of our. Uh, you know, our events so that people know and can do business with them. So we want to create a marketplace for our business uh, owners to be able to sell to other African-Americans and create that, that relationship of trust that's needed within our community that's lacking a lot of times. And that's why we don't do business with each other. So we're an ecosystem builder at heart and that's what we're doing. But then in addition to that, we're connecting African-American professionals with corporations who care about the black community and want to invest and want to uplift the community and creating a pipeline, you know, and that is key and critical as well. That connection is very critical. You know, we all need a connect, right, to uh, help us grow our business exponentially. That extra help that can come from connecting and our building relationships with larger companies. Uh, I want to just break down, if you will, the services you provide. So I become a member today because uh, I'm a business owner, I'm a black owned business. And I'm thinking, okay, I wanna be a part of this because you guys are all about supporting and helping to grow uh, existing businesses. So what are some of the services I can enjoy as a business professional? So the big things that we bring to the table is education, access to capital. Uh, we have a business academy that you can go through, which essentially puts you around people that are your peers where you can share and have like this business round table. And then when you graduate that eight week program, which is free for our members. Um, so we educate you on um, all of the fundamentals, help you with your social media and your marketing, your business plan, your PR, put you in contact with those professionals that can help. But the biggest thing is then, then our corporate uh, clients, you get to pitch in front of them. You get to let them know that you're available for their supplier diversity program. So these are the Duke Energies and the Kroger's and the Bank of America's and, and those types of companies that we have as sponsors who would never you would never be able to get on the radar so now we you skip the line and get directly in front of buyers uh, of these organizations that are trying to support the black community so i think that's the biggest benefit and then in addition to that the banks that we're you know the bank of america and the u.s banks and the ones that support us have access to capital programs that can help small business owners, everything from grant programs to loan products that you probably wouldn't be aware of, that you would become aware of, and like I said, be at the front of the line for uh, being a member of Black Achievers because of our partnership. So we open doors for our members. That is amazing. So is there an assessment, you know, so say that, you know, Eric Frazier and the Power is Now Media, a media business, uh, becomes a member of your organization, which we're going to do, by the way. Uh, is there an assessment that you would take us through then to see, you know, kind of where we're at, what we need, and where we could go for capital, for expansion, and all these other things? Tell me about that process. 
So on our website, it's simply, it's an application process that you fill out. And then once we get that, we give an interview. So we'll interview you um, and then find out exactly what you said, what your skill level is, where you are in your business, uh, what are the challenges that you currently have and where are you trying to go future wise? And then we try, we then go through all of the applications we receive and we start to categorize people of similar, um, you know, similar backgrounds or, or being able to complement your business and put you in the same cohort. So it's all about cohorts, just like college. It's like, hey, it's who you know. So if you can get in the right rooms with the right other African-American professionals then you get to share resources and partner and we've done a lot of these where people have partnered together on real estate deals in particular in Cincinnati uh, partnered together on uh, becoming a partner in a new business startup uh, even partnering together as far as like doing business with each other so a PR firm that can help your company for example so it's that cohort of like-minded people who are really really hyper focused on building something that you don't have the time to go out there and figure Figure out how to find and, and attract these people. We do that for you through that assessment and put you in the right cohorts. In addition to that kind of networking and uh, and support, uh, tell me about the marketing opportunities. How often do you meet, and where are your chapters right now, and where where will you be coming or going? Yeah, so our chapters. Yeah, so our chapters are um, right now in the major cities. So it's New York, Houston, Charlotte, Atlanta, uh, Philadelphia, Chicago. Washington, uh, Nashville, Dallas, of course, here in Cincinnati. Um, the West Coast is Los Angeles. And then we have Columbus and Cleveland. So those are our major markets, which are all of the major markets for most African-Americans. And that allows us to, uh, you know, basically reach a, a broad number of us. What we do is we're a Zoom for first organization. So we um, host all of our events uh, over Zoom. They are quarterly. So in each city, every quarter, you can jump on a Zoom call with us. There will be several hundred people, uh, like in LA, we have one coming up, I think next Thursday, um, that will have at least two or 300 people RSVP for. It'll have a hundred people or so on the call. Um, very exciting, you go through networking. And then what happens is we look for local um, individuals like yourself or someone else who wanna lead a chapter. And then you would start to have uh, local meetups or in-person events. And over time, that would start to bring people together from the Zoom call into uh, in-person events. Well, wow, that sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to the next one coming up in LA. Uh, is this a, a Zoom event? Do you break out in Zoom rooms and people get together? How is it conducted? So we um, essentially what we do is we have a uh, main room where we ex uh, explain what Black Achievers is and what it's about and our mission and how we operate. And then we break into three separate rooms. So the first uh, breakout room will be something around how do you invest for the future? Uh, we'll have an investment in real estate uh, breakout room. How, uh, how would you do even commercial real estate and, and just people talking about my expertise uh, family, uh, you know, family run units, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also have people who talk about investing in the stock market. So it's a lot of financial literacy on each of the breakout rooms, but it's with peer to peer. So that's what people like about it is you can meet someone who's very similar to you or completely different. You could be 25 and you meet someone who's 65 who has a lot of more experience, but that exchange of information amongst uh, colleagues and peers at different stages of their development is why people rave about it. And we have so many success stories of people who just come out of these just like, hey, I, it's changed everything in the way I look at how I do my finances. Now, if you can't make the event, but you're a member, are you able to watch the replay or is it, do you broadcast it anywhere? So we don't broadcast yet, but we do uh, record each one of them and we do put those on YouTube and we do send that out to the group so you can see that. And people have uh, definitely take a look at those and it's great for them. It's not as good as experiencing the one-on-one -on -one and, and meeting people, but it is good for them to be able to see what's going on. Now, here at the Powers Now Media, uh, our focus is on housing and real estate, and we are blessed to have some extraordinary real estate agents. Many are very successful already in real estate. Uh, some are on their way to achieving their goals. Um, do you have a lot of individuals who are real estate broker uh, owners or agents trying to develop their business? And uh, are, is, it, is it centered around the business of real estate or just maybe the acquisition of real estate? 
Um, so we have both. I mean, just like here in Cincinnati, we have a lot of real estate agents who are members of our organization. So I would assume when we are in California, after our, this is our first kickoff in California coming up this week, um, we will have a lot of real estate agents as well. So we have everyone from um, you know, people who finance real estate deals, who actually are developers in real estate, also individuals who are uh, real estate agents. And then we just have members who need real estate agents. So a lot of our, uh, about 50% of our members are young. They're between the ages of 22 and 35. They begin to, be, you know, start families and want to settle down and they don't know how to purchase a home. So we try to couple the, that um, that group of people with the real estate agents in our networks and create deal flow for them. So that's one of the things that we're um, also doing here. And we'll be doing that, um, you know, nationally as well. Do you have any data? Uh, you just cited the age, average age. Do you have any data on your membership that speaks to home ownership or business ownership? Like how many members, how many people in your, in your organization are homeowners or business owners? So the, we've done surveys. So it's around 35% that are homeowners. It is around 15% that are business owners. Of the business owners, uh, only a very small percentage of that 15% actually own their own company where they do it as their primary source of income. So most of them are, have a W-2 but they have a side business or business they operate on their side. So, you know, out of 100,000 people, you expect about 15,000 to identify as some type of business owner and about the national average on home ownership. Now, do you have um, uh, any plans to open up a chapter, say perhaps in Orange County, Riverside County, or do you just focus on major cities? And then what about Northern California, Alameda County and Contra Costa? And these are big counties, big cities there, Oakland, you know? Well, once we get you on board to help us uh, navigate California, we will be doing that. But right now, uh, just for capacity reasons, first pass is the major cities that we have listed. But the idea would be to grow over the next five to 10 years to a million members in order to, that's 10X. In order to do that, we would have to hit lots of places in California. And we would probably uh, mimic a lot of other major organizations like the NAACP's chapter footprint or Urban League chapter footprint as we grow, right? Well, that's really exciting. A, mem a million members. Did you ever think you would get to 100,000? Honestly, you no, no. I mean, it just seemed impossible. I mean, we started off, it was just me. And then it was like a group of six of us for a long time, over a year where we couldn't even plan an event, right? So we finally plan an event and 400 people show up and go from that 400 to the 4,000 that we had just 12 months later seemed impossible. But to go from that, that you know, 4,000 to a national footprint with live chapters that are actually doing real things as we speak almost every day, um, of the week is just phenomenal. Now, getting from 100,000 to a million, I don't have a strategy for that yet. So that part, I, I am trying to couple it with uh, corporate sponsors and trying to move into footprints that say a Kroger would sponsor us to stand up these chapters. And I think that may mm -hmm. work. Well, you know, I am here to support you. Uh, I'm all in, man, uh, to help you get to a million members. I'm so impressed. I mean, just to get to 100,000, shows you have to be adding value or people leave. You know, I, I know this having my own experiences working with nonprofit organizations and, and you know, membership based organizations. Now, I want to transition. We have some guests on the, the show with us today, and I want to give them an opportunity to ask questions. But before we get there, we're going to take a break before we bring in the guests. Uh, if you could take a moment and just share a few success stories of of uh, individuals, uh, business owners, or non-business owners who became business owners, share a few success stories so our audience uh, can get a kind of an idea of the impact you're making. Okay. Yeah. So our biggest success story in terms of dollars would be our business institute, which we haven't talked about yet. But we have an institute that teaches African Americans about mergers and acquisitions. So. Um, how do you buy a company that's a million to $10 million in sales that already has five to 50 employees? Like that's not an easy thing. You need an entire deal team and it's very technical and it's not something that historically we have access to. Well, our business institute was created in conjunction with the Gehring Center, which is one of the largest um, educators in this space. 
And what they did was put together an eight-week curriculum for us. And we've taken individuals, about 20 per year, who qualify, who have some starting capital, um, who could get uh, qualified for a bank loan through our process. And in that, we've actually generated two deals. We have one individual who was the president of the company he already uh, was already working at that the owners wanted to sell to him. It's a $10 million manufacturing company. We were able to put him in touch with the right deal team and lawyers and accountants do the due diligence, took over eight. 18 months, but he's purchased a $10 million company. That is phenomenal. That'll be life-changing for him and his family for generations to come. We have another individual who's in the process of purchasing a $1.5 million logistics business. So we're the most proudest of that mergers and acquisitions institute because as you scale that up around the country, you start to have more African-American people owning these massive companies that can help the community and drive generational wealth and also employment. So on that side, a lot of success. The second thing I would say is on employment, we've helped, you know, 30, 40, 50 people get new jobs in the last year, right? So it's like they come to us, they say, hey, I'm leaving my job. I like to, you know, I like to look for something else. And we help place them at different uh, partners of ours. And then also our smallest business owners, which would be the Business Academy. We've had two individuals raise uh, over $10,000 after the pitch contest directly on the spot. So, you know, that's not a huge amount of money, but for a young person who's just starting a business to win a pitch top competition to get $10,000 equity into their business, I mean, that's a phenomenal win as well. Well, we know capital is a challenge in all businesses, right? Every business needs capital. And uh, you provide support in doing that, not just with the pitch contest, but you can help businesses connect with banks and our non-banks that are willing to provide grants and monies to for business expansion. Uh, does that include startup to expansion? Correct. That's on every uh, gamut of the you know ecosystem. So it's startup to expansion. We give. There's a lot of programs out here, but you would not know about them as a business owner because you're usually heads down trying to figure out how to get the next sale, et cetera, et cetera. So a resource like uh, ours aggregates those opportunities. But more importantly, um, it's all about who you know. I mean, we put you in the room with the right person, and if you don't create that relationship or have the opportunity to create that relationship, you just cannot possibly get one of these grants. And we've gotten grants for people um, that have personally gotten to know me that I've been making introduction, et cetera, et cetera. So that ecosystem of trust and relationships is really what's powering Black achievers and making it sticky to your point on why people want to be a part of it. It's all about who you know. For those of you just joining us, we're talking to Michael Moore, the CEO of Black Achievers Inc. based in Ohio. And they're doing big things, folks. They really are. I'm so glad he's with us today to learn about the organization. Michael, I've never heard of you, man, until just a few weeks ago. And I'm so glad you're with us today. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we have some special guests who have questions for Michael. And maybe they'll ask some questions you may have right now if you're listening or watching to The Power Is Now. We'll be right back. Want to keep up with the current developments happening in the world of real estate? The Real Estate Roundtable, hosted by Eric L. Frazier, is a show you do not want to miss. The show features a panel of VIP agents who are passionate about helping people. It is what they do best. They discuss today's hot topics, latest market updates and trends. The panel also conducts interviews with prominent figures in the industry. New episode every Friday live on Facebook and replay on the Power Is Now YouTube channel. 